Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Mono Black Vampires, which includes a few of the new Jumpstart cards, and one of them is Drana, Liberator of Malakir, a 3 mana 2 3 legendary vampire ally with flying and first strike, and whenever Drana deals combat damage to a player, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each attacking creature we control, including Drana herself, and of course, because Drana has first strike, this ability will trigger before regular damage, putting that plus one counter on each attacking creature we control, which can definitely affect how combat shapes out. And then another new addition from Jumpstart is Gifted Aetherborn, a 2 mana 2-3 two, Aetherborn Vampire with a Death Touch and Life Link, so just an incredibly efficient creature and a great addition for the deck. And then the reason to play a vampire deck, of course, is Sorin, Imperius Bloodlord, a 3 mana planeswalker with a lot of various abilities. The minus 3 we can often use if we have a Champion of Dusk in hand, putting a vampire creature card from our hand onto the battlefield without having to pay its mana cost. And Champion of Dusk, a 5 mana 4 4 vampire knight that when it enters a battlefield lets us draw X cards and we lose X life, where X is the number of vampires we control. So this makes for a great card draw engine in the deck, especially alongside Sorin being able to cheat it out for 3 mana instead of having to pay 5, and we've got plenty of life gain to offset the life loss from Champion of Dusk. Of course Gifted Aetherborn is one of those ways, and of course Sorin is the other, since we can use the first plus 1 ability to give target creature we control death touch and lifelink until end of turn, and if it's a vampire it also gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter, and then the second plus 1 lets us sacrifice a vampire, and if we do, Sorin deals 3 damage to any target and we gain 3 life, so a nice removal spell, and we've got a few expendable vampires that we don't mind sacrificing in this deck. And another great combo with Surin is the recently printed Silver Smote Ghoul, a 3 mana 3 1 zombie vampire, saying at the beginning of our end step, if we gained 3 or more life this turn, we can return the ghoul from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, and for 1 on a black, we can also sacrifice it to draw a card. So if we sacrifice the ghoul to Surin's second plus 1 ability, we'll gain the 3 life necessary to then return the ghoul to the battlefield at the beginning of our end step, so we can keep looping the ghoul with Surin and dealing 3 damage to anything and gaining 3 life. So that's a great combo. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got 2 copies of Disfigure, just as a cheap removal spell, plenty of valuable 1-drops worth killing in Historic at the moment. Then we've got the full playset of Knight of the Ebon Legion, of course the best of all the 1-drops, as a 1-2 Vampire Knight, and for 2 and a black, the Knight gets plus 3 plus 3 and Death Touch until end of turn. And at the beginning of our end step, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Knight of the Ebon Legion, and this also includes us losing life, so if we play a Champion of Dusk with 4 Vampires in play and we lose 4 life, that's also a way to potentially trigger the Knight of the Ebon Legion. And then we've got the full playset of Vicious Conquistador, much weaker than Knight of the Abel Legion in terms of 1-drops, but we just want to fill out the curve, make sure we have enough board presence to leverage Sorin and Champion of Dusk as a 1-mana one 1-2 one Vampire Soldier, and whenever the Conquistador attacks, each opponent loses 1 life. And then at 2-mana, we've got the full playset of Dusk Legion Zealot, a 2-mana one 1-1 one Vampire Soldier that when it enters a battlefield lets us draw cards and we lose 1 life, so this is the Black Elvish Visionary, and another card we don't mind sacrificing to Surin's second plus 1 ability. Then we also have 3 copies of Heartless Act, I think this is the preferred 2-mana removal spell in Historic at the moment, as it can deal with the various goblins like Cranko and Muxus, which cast down and eliminate cannot, and it also deals with Questing Beast, which is another card we can sometimes struggle with. And then we've got our 4 copies of Gifted Aetherborn, 4 Silver Smote Ghoul, 4 Sorin, despite being legendary, it's such an important card in the deck, although we only have the 3 copies of Drana, and then the full playset of Champion of Dusk, and then a mana base, a very simple, 20 beautiful basic swamps with the Jumpstart Vampire theme, and then 4 copies of Castle Lochthwain, which is also an important piece of the puzzle, giving us a powerful card draw engine in the late game. Now this hasn't been confirmed yet, but there are rumors that we might be getting a 1 mana discard spell soon in Historic, as part of Amoncat Remastered, to everyone's surprise. So if that card does eventually make its way into Historic, I could easily see slotting this into this deck, maybe replacing some of the copies of Vicious Conquistador or Disfigure. So yeah, that's definitely something exciting to look forward to. But for now, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, with a reasonable hand. Conquistador into Zealot into Ghoul, hope to draw Surin.
facing turn one swamp. There's a champion of dusk. A nice way to refuel. And a waste knot or point on the discard deck. Let's uh, double up here. And if they make me discard, I don't mind discarding the ghoul. Second waste knots and a vicious rumors. So that'll give them two zombies here. I mean, maybe I should discard a champion of dusk since I'm probably not gonna cast it before they make me discard it, and then next turn I can at least play the ghoul. Yeah, I guess I can buy that. And then the Aetherborn can attack. And then now we can start activating Castle Lochthwain. Opponent has one card in Graveyard, so they're gonna plus. Opponent gets four mana. And a Languish, wow. To wipe the entire board. That's unfortunate. Well, end of turn, we'll activate Castle. No point in main phasing it and having the opponents discard whatever I draw. So the bad news is their opponent has a 6 loyalty Liliana in play. The good news is that they have double Waste Knot, which doesn't do much if we're empty handed. Although I guess I'm gonna draw a card here. Swamp is fine. So they can decide to kill my champion or make me discard. Hoping I have something juicy in hand, but as it turns out it's just a lance. So waste not adds for mana. But now champion can attack Liliana. And we can empty our hand nicely. Alright, so now we're actually in decent shape. I missed an opportunity here. And Castle Lochthwain playing an important role. If we ever find a way to gain three life, we'll get back at least one Silver Smoke Ghoul. We might see Liliana take out one of our creatures. I do hope this mask is intimidating enough. Davriel joins Liliana. And Pona takes out Drana. You grow weak. Loneliness can hurt. So let us activate Castle. Nah, actually, well, let's just do it end of turn. Okay, I'm done. Wouldn't mind drawing Soren to gain a bit of life back. Rankle's a nice one. Rankle is also a way for the opponent to put cards in her hand that they can then discard afterwards. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna activate Castle here. I maybe should have done it in response to the Rankle activation if I wanted to. So we'll attack with everyone. And empty our hands. We're at 8, opponent's at 5. So feeling relatively safe. But another Languish could wipe the board. This was also kind of my problem when trying out various discard decks is if... Um, you end up with Waste Knots, but the opponent's empty-handed. You kind of need a way for the opponent to keep drawing cards. 
which doesn't always work out. Do have a Heartless Act in hand now, which can translate into a couple extra cards for the opponents. So they get to draw two, but they're still at four life. And we're gonna fall to two from Davriel. But a single blocker is not enough. Alright, close game here against the mono black discard. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And this hand's okay. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Turn one elf. And they turn to a Steel Leaf Champion. Fair enough. At least we can kill it with Heartless Acts. If I had another one drop, it would also be reasonable to disfigure the elf and play something else first. But let's just kill the champion now before we run into some sort of hexproof trick. And hit for two. It's gonna be an elvish archroot, so our opponent is on elves. And this figure is a nice answer here. Do I Aetherborn or Zealots? Let's Aetherborn for now. Playing Zealot would maybe improve my odds of being able to play Sorin next turn, which definitely has its uses if they have another Archdroid I need to kill. But Aetherborn applies a bit more pressure. Drana's not a bad draw. Send in just Aetherborn. Opponent has five mana here. So, don't need to fear Crater Hoof Behemoth just yet. It's gonna be another Steel Leaf Champion. Heartless Act, nice draw. Opponent takes it. Could play Zealot hoping to draw land and still play Heartless Acts. I mean, what's the worst that can happen next turn if I don't kill Champion? It's probably fine. And then we'll just play Conquistador instead. Imperius Perfects. Take nine. And can I attack with everyone here? I think so. Keep the Heartless Act as a surprise, can maybe take out the Imperius Perfect, shrink down the opponent's team, and kill a few extra elves. So our opponent on a stompy version of the elf deck with Steel Leaf Champion. Some decks prefer to have a bit more ramp and set up some bigger plays. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, we'll just kill the Imperius Perfect, I think. Rana happens, and their opponent loses all their elves. And there we go, so we got to see a nice game with Drana in action, adding a whole bunch of plus one counters to the team. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's pretty unexciting, no Sorin, no Drana, no Knight of the Ebon Legion, but it still looks keepable enough. 
Double Dusk Legion Zealot to replenish our hands, bit of removal to interact, and a Silver Smote Ghoul to combo with a Surin that we can eventually draw. Now if this is a ramp deck with Field of the Dead, drawing Heartless Act and Disfigure is not great. That's the downside of playing these removal spells in best of one at least. Next turn we can play Ghoul or we can go Zealot plus Conquistador, maybe look for Sorin. It's gonna be an Uro for now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna double spell here. Just playing a Silver Smote Ghoul is not gonna cut it. So if we do find a Sorin, we've got Champion of Dusk to combo with it too. Nissa's gonna be hard to beat. Although we can use this figure to shrink down the islands, as opposed to having to use Heartless Act. And then we can still play a Ghoul. I expect him to block the Conquistador, so it will survive. But our opponents will still have a lot of mana, so if they have something like an Ugin here, it's probably lights out. If not, we get to play Champion of Dusk and draw five. Six mana for creatures, all right, so not an Ugin at least, but might be a Hydroid Crisis. And that's a creature that we can't easily kill with Heartless Act, so that's the downside of the card. Crisis for six. Yeah, the ramp matchup is probably one of the worst matchups for the Vampire deck. We would much rather play against other creature decks where abilities like Death Touch and Lifelink matter. For now, I guess we'll draw our own cards here with Champion of Dusk. Don't really have any great attacks. I can Heartless Act and then kill their land essentially, but I don't think that's necessarily worth it, as I still won't be able to kill Nissa. And then I'll discard probably a Disfigure here. It's going to be a Cavalier of Thorns. Opponent playing with Sublime Epiphany as well. So what's her out at this point? It's difficult to really come back from this. Maybe Sorin dealing damage directly to Nissa, but we're still facing this Hydroid Crisis. And we're at 4 life, so I can't really play another Champion of Dusk. So... Anything I can do here? Now I can still remove three counters from the Krasis, shrinking it down. But that still doesn't let us block it profitably with Drana. Can draw a card with Silver Smote Ghoul here. See what we can find. Knight of the Avon Legion. Yeah, I think this is game over. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice looking hand facing the Lurus deck, so probably a Spirit Dancer deck, so we don't have any cheap removal, but Soren can deal 3 damage, which may or may not be enough. I'll try it. Soren can put Champion of Dusk in play. 
drawing at least two cards. And hopefully they don't have a turn two Spirit Dancer. Although given that they didn't have a turn one play, that's definitely a likely scenario. This figure is not a bad one. Could also sort and sacrifice knights, but yeah, I think I should just disfigure this. Don't want to let them untap and have all sorts of instants they can play in response. Plus, this is on cast, so even if I kill the Spirit Dancer, they'll still get to draw a card in response to an aura. Another Spirit Dancer, but no third land to play one mana aura. So now I get to attack. And then play Knights and sacrifice a Knight to kill the Spirit Dancer. And next turn we can finally put this Champion of Dusk in play. Hopefully they're out of Spirit Dancers. It's gonna be the Alsade now. Now we could still struggle to deal with a single creature, even if it's not a Spirit Dancer, enchanted with a bunch of auras. So I can attack with the Knights, and then still minus Soren put Champion of Dusk in play. They're probably gonna take the damage from Knights. Opponent takes one. Yeah, I could deal damage to the Alsade, but they likely have a way to protect it. So I think I just wanna put some stuff in play here. And we found another Sorin. Yeah, I guess I'll play another Sorin and put another champion in play. That's also going to put a counter on the Knight of Ebon Legion. Alright, and our opponent concedes to the second Sorin. Fair enough. Yeah, could have been better. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hands. Pretty likely to find a third land, and then we've got the combo of Sorin plus Ghoul. And double Aetherborn to start things off. Opponent likely on a sacrifice deck if they're playing Gigantha's companion, or maybe Monored. Alright. A Monored burn deck. So playing Aetherborn is tempting, but I might want to kill this Thermo Alchemist, which is also a spectacle enabler for the opponent. If I play Aetherborn, then it's definitely gonna get killed by a burn spell. Yeah, let's just kill the Alchemists. I don't think there's any specific creature I'm saving the Heartless Act for, other than a Thermal Alchemist. So might as well. Opponent gonna shock my face to enable Spectacle, maybe, as we see a light of the stage. And yeah, they're struggling to hit their land drops, maybe. Alright, they had a Forgotten Cave in hand. Alright, so a lot of ways we can play this. I don't hate playing Ghoul, and then next turn, if it survives, I can sacrifice it to Sorin, start gaining three per turn. And if they kill it, we'll still be able to get it back eventually. If I draw land, I'll probably just play double Aetherborn. Another line of the stage finds Cure, which can take out my Ghoul. Or can also go face. Go his face. And yeah, we'll attack, and then start plussing Sorin. And now they'll have to spend two burn spells to take out Sorin, which will buy us enough time to deploy these Aetherborns. One way we could still lose is if our opponent has Experimental Frenzy and just starts going off that way. But if they just have a normal hand, this is a pretty difficult combo for the opponent to beat. 
So double burn spell takes out Sorin. Could also play Drana here. Or I can go Aetherborn plus Conquistador. Let's play Drana. If Drana survives and they don't top deck a burn spell here, she goes up to 4 toughness and then survives any future 3 damage burn spell. And we'll start growing our team. Alright, they did stop deck a lightning strike, that's fine. Another ghoul. It's weird that I'm not playing the Aetherborns out against the burn deck. But it could be better to play another ghoul here. Now let's attack and then play Aetherborn in Conquistador. And then we can eventually get double Aetherborn in play to return the ghoul from the graveyard. Opponent just concedes at the mere sight of our first of three Aetherborns. So yeah, the Monorad burn matchup is definitely favorable between the Aetherborns and Sorin, as you can imagine. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? It's not amazing, but keepable. Turn one healer sock. Let's keep up this figure in case they're gonna put some enchantment on it. It's gonna be Pride Mate instead. Alright, we'll disfigure the Pride Mate before it gets a counter. So we're up against a life gain deck. Don't know if this is a favorable matchup. I think it's probably in favor of the white tech. But we'll see. At least Rana can block the hawk. The card we don't want to see is Heliod, since that can represent a lot of plus one plus one counters and no way for us to really deal with Heliod. Just an ult for now. Make that two. Opponent up to 26. And a surrender draw, that's nice. So let us... Put Soren in play alongside Champion of Dusk. Draw some cards. Try and hit our land drop. And then do I attack? Probably not with Drana to hold off the Hawk, but the Aetherborn can get in there. Alright, opponent's down to one card in hand. If it's nothing too powerful, we might be okay. Pride Mate's pretty good. And yeah, this is one of the shortcomings of Heartless Act. Is that it's not the best answer to Pride Mate as soon as it picks up a counter. They're gonna make Hawk unblockable to finish off Surin. And grow the Pride Mates. Alright, well, I guess it's time to race. If I get in with everyone... I think that's okay, because I can still use Heartless Act to remove three counters from the Pride Mates. And uh, that's going to be enough to kill it, if they block any of my creatures. Opponent took it all. And then we'll play Ghoul. Although, yeah, the Pride Mate is gonna be pretty big next turn. I think I still just empty my hands. Or I could Heartless Act the Soul Warden. Yeah, maybe that's the plan. Kill the Soul Warden. And then... Probably just play Ghoul. And I don't mind trading it. There's Heliots at long last. 
At least the Soul Warden has gone, but Heliot is active. It's going to make a 2-2 Healer's Hawk. Alright, so this is going to end up being a pretty interesting race. We're hoping to find another removal spell. Another Champion of Dusk would be nice. Also don't have Castle Lochthwain to draw his cards, which is unfortunate. So what happens if I attack? Let's say I attack with everyone. Drana puts a counter on the team. They can eat Champion of Dusk with Pride Mates. Heliot kills another creature. Yeah, that's not great for me. So Drana might have to stay back. Just so I can block the Hawk. But if it picks up an additional counter, then I wouldn't even be able to do that. Maybe I just have to sacrifice a ghoul here in order to draw something relevant. That's not it. Yeah, I think I got a pass. Aetherborn could gain 3 to get back Ghoul, but then I'll lose Aetherborn. And Johnny Strength of the Pride, that's a powerful card. Yeah, we need another Champion of Dusk. Before it's too late. And Johnny's just gonna gain 8 points on life, which puts a counter on the Hawk. And then another counter from the Leon and Vanguard means it can attack past Drana now. Or at least block her. And then they can eventually just ultimate a Jani to wipe my board. Opponent will attack. This opponent is up to 30, gets another counter. I think I'm out of options, or opponent can just ultimate a Jani next turn. As I'll be able to give the Pride Maid lifelink. And get above 35 life. I can't kill a Jani. And I can't get my opponent below 35. So I think that's game over here. Yeah, to have a chance this game, we needed a second champion, maybe a Castle Lochthwain to draw a few additional cards here. Suppose I maybe should have just attacked with everyone at Jani. Still wouldn't have killed it, but I was gonna lose my board to a Jani anyway. And uh, at least I would have gotten back the Silver Smote Ghoul. Although I'm not sure what that would have accomplished. But I'm just dead on board now to Pride Mate and Hawk attacking. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a solid opening hand. We'll have to decide which to drop to lead with. Playing Zealot first sets up Soren's second possibility a little bit better. But if we think we can attack and don't need to kill anything, getting the Aetherborn out there first might be beneficial. Opponent with a Thornwood Falls. So likely Field of the Dead ramp, in which case the damage from Aetherborn is nice, but not nearly as relevant as finding more action with the Dusk Legion Zealot. Try find Champion of Dusk to draw us more cards. Maybe find a Drana for next turn. Temple of Enlightenment, so confirms our suspicions of a Field of the Dead type deck. And a Grazer. Now I could also play Soren Minus and put an Aetherborn in play, it's not like my Soren's gonna die. 
And that way I get to put two permanents in play this turn. Sure. The only downside is that I wouldn't be able to minus three again if I draw a Champion of Dusk. But we're pretty close to just hard casting it anyway. Uh, Zusa I can kill. But not before they can play two lanes. So next turn I get to double spell. Plus on the Dusk Legion Zealots, so it can attack past the Grazer. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. And then cards we're hoping to draw. Drana. Champion of Dusk. Even a Knight of the Evan Legion would increase the pressure. Do I need to Heartless Act Azusa when they only have two cards left? I don't think they even played all the lands they could with Azusa last turn, since they also played Explore. So we'll let our opponent keep Azusa for now. Keep Heartless Act to maybe kill Uro. And alright, opponent packs it in. They must not have had a very exciting hand, maybe a second Azusa, who knows. So, yeah, at least the Vampire deck, while it may not be the most powerful deck, doing the most broken things, it is at least a consistent deck that will apply a bit of pressure, play a few removal spells, and uh, if it does have Soren into Champion of Dusk, potentially draw a lot of cards in the process too. So if the rumors are true that we will get Thoughtseize in Amonkhet Remastered, then that will be an amazing addition for any aggressive black deck, including this one and will definitely improve matchups like the ramp deck where we otherwise sometimes feel powerless to the opponent's ramp shenanigans. If the rumors turn out to be false, then Vampires will probably remain a fun playable deck, but definitely not part of the top tier of best of one in Historic. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.